Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 to 14, 16 to 17, and 20 to 21. I am coming soon. The Alpha and the Omega. The Spirit and the Bride, come, I, John, heard a voice saying to me, Behold, I am coming soon. I bring with me the recompense of to each according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are they who wash their robes so as to have the right to the tree of life, and enter the city through its gates. I, Jesus, sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring spring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, Come. Let the hearer say, Come. Let the one who thirsts come forward, and the one who wants it receive the gift of life-giving water. The one who gives this testimony says, Yes. I am coming soon, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The risen Christ once again announces his speedy coming, and he makes two great claims. One he will reward everyone according to his work. Two he is Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. The Jewish rabbis took over the concept of the Alpha and Omega and applied it to God, with their own, in own interpretation. They said that, since God was the beginning, he received his power from no one. Since he was the middle, he shared his power with no one, and since he was the end, he never handed over his power to anyone. Jesus guarantees the truth of all that John has seen and heard. He then goes on to give his credentials. I am the root and the offspring of David, he says. That is a reference to Isaiah 11:1. 1, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesus is saying that in him is the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Jesus is thus the eternal source of being from which David came and at the same time Jesus is the promised descendant of David. When the risen Christ said that he was the morning star, he claimed again to be the light of the world and the conqueror of all the world's sin and darkness. There is the invitation of the Spirit and the Bride. The Bride, we know, is the Church. Here the Spirit is the Holy Spirit joined with the Bride, in extending an invitation to all to join the Church. Those who here are encouraged to respond and to extend the invitation to others. The wonderful promise is given that all those who are thirsty may come and will receive the water of life without price. This is the wonderful invitation extended to every generation up to the coming of Christ. Those who recognize their need and realize that Christ is the provider of salvation are urged to come while there is still time. The scriptures are clear, the gift of eternal life, here called the water of life, is free for the taking. It has been paid for by the death of Christ on the cross and is extended to all who are willing to receive it. Closes human history as Genesis opened it in paradise. But there is one distinct difference in Revelation evil is gone forever. Genesis describes Adam and Eve walking and talking with God. Revelation describes people worshipping God face to face. Genesis describes a garden with an evil serpent. Revelation describes a perfect city with no evil. The Garden of Eden was destroyed by sin. In Revelation paradise is recreated in the New Jerusalem.